So then we are back with the more understandings from the renewed covenant. From the Aramaic English translation of the word. Regarding then the um, renewed covenant. And then the line of understanding from the time of Moses until the closing of this age. Then we understand what the Messiah came to do. The Messiah explained when he came in person, he came from heaven, he was the creator himself. He came himself in the form of the sun, and he explained the entire world's history from the scriptural viewpoint, from the start until the closing of the age. The Messiah was the most important person that ever lived in the earth. And he is yet the most important. He only is found in his holy tabernacles. These days where there are so many thousands of denominations. Each of those denominations are a lie. Deceit. Each of them. Thus then when you read the understanding of the Messiah when he said broad is the way leading to destruction. Then you understand. Each and every denomination outside of the understanding of the holy tabernacles. Those are a lie. That's why the Messiah, he was absolutely sure what he was speaking of. Because the Messiah, he knew there is only a way and only a way only. It was the works then of his father when he was involved in the first service. And understand, the father was in a holy temple when he was then performing the completion of the spring feast. So these days where you find thousands of denominations and Protestants, and Baptists, and Mormons, and then Catholics, and then other types of religion. Each of those are a lie. When you compare with the divine, if you have a divine word in your mind, you try to understand what the divine means. Any other religion is a lie. If you consider a religion for itself not having the divine in mind, then you believe what you want. But if you take a position where you want to understand the divine and the authorship of the Creator, then there is only an answer and an answer only. Holy Tabernacles. There is no mixture of paganism with divine. What is divine is divine. That's why the word you hear divine. Isn't that profound? What is pagan is pagan. Isn't that profound? For some people they were so twisted for so many years when they hear simple truths can be extremely profound. What is divine is divine. What is pagan is pagan. Easter is not part of the divine. Easter is pagan. Christmas is pagan. There is no mixture.
That's why the Hebraic people, they should remain as agricultural people. Because the Creator is very stern when related with His understandings. But He is then stern because He wants stability. He wants His line of understanding stable. Not because He is enforcing Himself. That's not the point. The point is make sure where His words are involved in the earth. Then whatsoever we then speak of Him must be stable. Must be solid. And then the Apostle said then later there is no variation with Creator. It's solid. So then these days where there are so many people thinking of themselves, somebody, so many preachers, so many evangelists, it's very important asking a person, should there be preachers, teachers, evangelists, prophets, apostles? Those were concocted, those were invented. There is no more requirement for apostles. The work that had to be done was done. The apostles were sent because there was a transitional time from the first service to the second service. When the first camp of the second service became then evident and then constructed, then it was the, nearly the ending of the apostleship. Try to understand, those people then, the elected, when they were clustering and forming a camp, that's where then the Gentiles should report at. There was no more reason to going out apostles from the camps. Because they were organizing themselves in sets of people and they would go around the world forming holy camps. No more reason for apostles. And then some of these people were so educated in junk. Oh, because this person is an apostle. He has governmental role, thinking of the world's government, mixed with heaven's government. The scandalization starts very plainly. A person wants to make a scoundrel because a person is speaking in this situation involved in apostleship, the mixture of government of the earth with the heaven, and then thrown in, what's the word? Miracles. Performing miracles. Obviously outside of the camp. Makes a person twice as a scoundrel. And they make their living out of it. Speaking junk, mesmerizing the people and deceiving. And there are many self-proclaimed prophets. Scoundrels to the core. And then evangelists. There is no such. When the Gentiles the report to the camps of the Hebrews for further teaching, then in itself when they receive words from heaven, 
then they themselves only the mere fact of saying to others what the Holy Yahweh was doing in their lives it's already enough no evangelists preachers what preachers for why do they preach the fact of those people in their holy camps having functions it is the teaching in themselves you don't have to have preacher those are the scoundrels because they teach you of a savior non-existent a wanderer from the holy tabernacles where do you find the savior a wanderer from the holy tabernacles did his father was then wandering from the temple or wandering away from the tabernacle in the desert were you in a corner of the desert over there taking care of your animals then you say oh that's Yahweh over there let's go have a talk with him no every time you would hear the holy word of the creator you would have to go to the temple or the tabernacle you have to report at the gate his son had to copy what his father did if his son wouldn't do what his father did the son was a scoundrel and he was not these people unfortunately became scoundrels these people became caught up in this stupid temple a mountain of rock that's what they are pieces of stone thrown around and they have neglected the second service the Messiah already came a long time ago that's why discipline is coming upon Israel and the people of Israel they neglected the second service Yahweh is not in the midst of them they are acting on their own the God of the Jews is Nahashten, Satan that's the God of the Jews So we decent people, we believe in the divine, we believe Yahweh, we believe in His Son, Yahweh Yeshua. We understand the second service. His Son would be found in His holy tabernacles. And a lot of people are confused with the church. Church does not exist. Churches do not have the line of understanding and set up an organization of the tabernacle in the desert. What is divine is divine. What is pagan is pagan. Synagogues are the places of Satan. Try to understand. Nahashten. 
Nahash means snake in Hebrew understanding. Satan, you know who he is. Then the people of the world, they get mesmerized by this temple junk. It's the same situation. They go around every seventh day and they get around and they read, 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 read and read in vain. They are reading, they are related, they are concocting theories of the first service. Yahweh is not anymore in the first service. Yahweh is gone from the first service. He delegated his son. His son is in the second service in his holy tabernacles. Plural. What are these worshippers of Satan doing mixing himself with the Holy First Service? They are crazy. Demoniacs and crazy. And don't be afraid of their clothing, their rags that they wear around their necks. And there are many identifications and then medals and Torah and reading. That's fake. Except the words of the Creator, the rest of it is fake. The only part we must protect are the words of the Holy Creator, Yahweh. The rest of us are pure fake. Why are they playing around with the first service for? Why are they crying around among stones? What were the orders of the Messiah? Go around the world and form holy tabernacles. He never said to return to the land. The orders was always for them to go out of their land forming holy lands. Those were the orders. That's why everywhere the Jews they are at, they are trouble. Everywhere they go, it's only trouble. They cause wars, they cause trouble, they steal, they take over. Because they don't understand boundaries. Their God is Satan. Satan has no boundaries. Outside of the divine understanding, he has no boundaries. Because when Yahweh is in charge, then Yahweh makes sure there is then boundary. And the boundary in itself came from the model of the desert. So you know the boundary before you start the conversation. A form of protection. His holy tabernacles would be secluded and they would be solely dedicated to Him. And what do the Jews do when they are not obedient to the Holy Covenant and then the Second Service Tabernacles? 
disobedient damn rascals only causing trouble everywhere they go it's only trouble they steal the work of the Gentiles they ransack their countries they steal their money they suck them dry our country is nearly sucking dry because of them because Jews have no boundaries outside of the Holy Covenant uncontrollable evil they can't control it it's a vicious cycle if they don't steal they don't ransack somebody else would do and that's why they steal therefore their God is Satan not Yahweh they use then Yahweh's name and his procedures to mesmerize you but when they put those areas in action they come out as then Satan Yahweh is not amongst them he is not don't be or even a inch concerned with it. Israel is in the hands of Satan. Yahweh is not with them. He knows what's going on over there, but he's not amongst them. Because his son received the delegation of power in heaven and in the earth. How then can the Jews go directly to Yahweh without the Son? They can't do it. When they force themselves with the first service, they are doing in vain. And what has Yahweh said? If a prophet speaking of the name of Yahweh, then what this prophet speaks of Yahweh does not come true, you should not fear the prophet. What Israel is doing for so many centuries, they became false prophets. They simply go around the world, suck them dry. in a pretense of wanting to build the third temple the third temple was not a mandate they were not ordered to build the temple Yahweh was not born yesterday. If they think they can come around and play with Yahweh, they are absolutely mistaken. He was not born yesterday or the day before. And then the Jews they have problem with Iranians, Palestinians, Iraqis. Everywhere they go they have problem. And then a person begins to think, how can they have a problem with so many countries? Whereas the other countries, they don't have problems so mountainous, a person might say, with other countries.
And then the Israelis, they have problem with the Iranians. And then they have problem with the Iraqians. Then they have problem with the Palestinians. But then I ask you, do you think the Palestinians, they have problem with the Iranians? No, they don't have problems with them. Israel is always a problem. And what pretends then they come together for peace? They don't want peace. Israel provokes war. Because their God is Satan. Satan is not for peace. Satan is always for war. Don't you think if they were on the side of Yahweh after so many decades and centuries, they would be in some sort of a plan for peace? And they are always blaming other countries. What were the orders from Yahweh? Go around the world form of holy tabernacles. If they were doing what they were told to do, they, they wouldn't be in such a crisis. Don't they understand that David, King David, decided to build a temple on his own? He was not told to build a temple. The proper term and the obedience of David should be the tabernacle. The tabernacle was set as a model. Every king afterwards should have maintained the tabernacle understanding. Temple is a junk. It was a gift. It's a building. That's why it was destroyed. The temple is not important. The temple was a period where Israel became inflated with pride. became evil. The temple became evil. That's why it was destroyed. If the temple was important, Yahweh would maintain it. But it was destroyed because it became evil. The temple is not important. Remove the temple from your minds. And replace it with the tabernacle service in the desert of the first service. Then we are on solid ground. And the model that you learned from the first service would be used in the future for the second service. Then the line is set until the closing of the age. No variation, no changes, except a transitional time from the first to the second, where you find those updates in Hebrews. And then continues the services. Israel became retarded. And they concocted theories and understandings and then characters and then numbers. And then if you take this number with this number comes out, this number means this. And then this number with that number. And if you reverse them, then uh, what is this for? He gave you orders for the first service. You practice it for more than a thousand years. Then for the salvation of the Gentiles. Go around the world for the holy tabernacles. Until he return, and then vengeance takes place. 
What else do you want to make a big deal out of it for? Crying around among some stupid stones. And then some of them, they get very, what's the word? Zealous. They, they think of those stones, oh, each stone is so important because it's the house of God. Blah! God damn it, this idea. Junk. He's not interested in the temple. He's interested in what his son told him to do. Go around the world to form then holy tabernacles. That's why the temple was destroyed. It was destroyed for a reason. If the temple was not then destroyed, the people would be caught in a stupid building until the closing of the age. That's why Yahweh decided to destroy it. Because the people of the time, they were thinking evil. Yahweh decided he wanted a representative. A copy representative of Israel and then Jerusalem as the camp. And then his people after training and functioning, they would shepherd the Gentiles. And you find these lines of understanding replete with references from the first and then the second. The lines, they start from the right to the left ever since Genesis. You begin with the lines, 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 lines of understanding. And the most important would be then the tabernacle. That's where then the leaders... Mostly Moses was then to report. A report for duty. Later his son would be in charge of the tabernacles and then the leaders would report for duty. No distinction. And then comes the ignorant people. Ah, oh, but the law, we are not then and under the law anymore. We are not under the demands of the law requiring sacrifices when sin takes place. But we are subjected to the holy precepts of the Holy Creator. And these laws are for the elect only. The Gentiles, they have no part in them. They are instructed at the gates. If the Creator thinks you should have certain areas of change in your life, He's going to provide you with understanding and knowledge for you to change. And every time comes from the Creator is perfect. It works every time. And some of these denominations are vicious scoundrels. Vicious. The word is vicious. They come around with their twisty understanding and boy they go around and they try to shove it down your throat. And a lot of times it's not a very friendly conversation. You think you have a friendly conversation sometimes but some of these twistings are so badly twisted 
And then I have the whole situation figured out. And then I start, can you explain Hebrews 10? No. Oh, we are not anymore under the law. What do you mean then by the 10th chapter of Hebrews? And then they come up with the 10 excuses because of it. In each of those excuses, they are very shaky. They don't understand it. There is a particular group, the testimony of Jehovah or Jehovah, Jehovah testimonies. Vicious, extremely vicious. It's a fake. Absolutely a fake. Adventists, a fake. Absolutely a fake. They teach of a Savior wandering from the Holy Tabernacles. It's a fake. You can't separate the teachings of Yahweh, the true Creator, the Father of Yahweh Yeshua, from the Holy Tabernacles. You can't separate them. His father was found in a tabernacle. His son would be found in the tabernacles. And then from then on the teaching takes place. Thus then you understand that at the end of times they would concoct for themselves teachers with itching ears teaching the doctrines of people. And then this situation of Ruach HaKodesh inhabiting people. That's another area that's absolutely out of context. Because then you were saved, you were the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's junk. Who told you that you are involved with the Ruach HaKodesh? Or Holy Spirit of some sort? You're not temple. Are you a temple of the Holy Spirit? Are you a tabernacle? It was out of context. What was the main teaching when the Messiah was speaking and then Shimon, Peter, then he voiced it out. The Creator there was there. He was in the form of a son, the Messiah, and he was asking around, Who do you think these people think of myself? And he asks for so many times, people were very uncomfortable. Some say Yerdiahu, some say another prophet. Or then Yohanan. And they were kind of divided among themselves. And then came Shimon or Peter and said, You are the son of Elohim, the true living God. And then the Messiah said, You are true. This revelation came from heaven. And because of this presence in you that came through with so much truth, that's how his tabernacles were going to be built. Then do you consider yourself a tabernacle? Where do you fit in the conversation? He was speaking of a near future transitional time from the first service and the second service. And he was speaking primarily with the selected or the elected from the time of Moses, his own people. The delegation of the responsibility would be also involved with the first anointing for the second service in the form of functions. So then when the camp was set in place with the tabernacles in them, or camps, should say, if you use plural, then they would be exercising functions. Then you understand, going around the world forming holy tabernacles. 
And then he's selected the people who would be involved with the tabernacles. You're not the temple of any kind of a Holy Spirit. The whole situation was taken out of context. Where do you find in the previous covenant people being temples? You only found a temple. A tabernacle where you could find a creator in it. Later his son would take over, then he would make plural instead of a singular. And people would report to the gate as they did before. Never changed. So what is this situation of you became temple of the Holy Spirit? Doesn't exist, doesn't fit. And then people are searching around as chickens without heads for some sort of a gifting. Some people are searching for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. They haven't found it yet. Great news, they don't exist. Stop searching for it. So then you understand when Shaul was then delineating the understanding, delineating the people who should have what kind of a function. Because a lot of the times that he went out and he was then instructing his own countrymen. He was then indicating that the Messiah had come and then he went to his own people in order for them to cluster. There was then the second service active. There is no individual people being named as temple. You don't name your congregation tabernacle or temple. You must recognize that the Torah or the instructions, those are active. 100% active. Half of it was completed the spring feast, half of it is yet future autumn feast. We are preparing ourselves for the autumn feast. Prophetic shadows of the events to come. What else could we say? We can find many areas where then you begin to understand what Shaul then was doing. He was primarily delegating responsibility to his own people. When you hear Timothy, he was then fathering him for a long time because the plan of Shaul also was then try to find a replacement for himself. But try to understand that he was not educating Gentiles. He was educating then his own countrymen. Because they had the understanding of the instructions. Not even the individuals from the Hebraic line can't be considered as temples or tabernacles. You have to have a group of people so that they can work together as a functioning group of people with a temple or then a tabernacle. That's where you get the understanding from. They gather around the Messiah in a tabernacle. That's where they get their instructions from. As crazy as you think this is, has 
that's the perfect plan of the Creator. He made it this way. Yeshiahu, Isaiah 6, the first chapter, gives you the understanding and the refurbishment of Israel and the holy city and also the camps, the tabernacles. Because from the 61st until the 66th chapter of Revelation, you have lots of future events from his time. You have to understand how to interpret it. There are many synonymous of names used for the same place. Zion, or then the daughters of Zion. He's speaking of a dear term of Israel. But some people, they take each name as a city. Then it makes a whole lot more confusion. There is the restoration of Israel. And then the tabernacles of the future. Because in the 66th chapter, then you find already when the earth is renewed. So if you retract a bit from the 66th, then you find steps of... understanding of each of those areas. And then they have these crazy reunions in Israel. People from many kinds of religions going over there and speaking. They should shut up. They don't know what they are speaking of. They are lunatics. Granted, some of them are honestly trying to search for the truth. Yet, they speak junk. Then understand, the writings of the Hebrews at the moment, it's not Hebrew, it's Aramaic. The writing form at the moment in Israel is Aramaic writing, not Hebrew. Paleo-Hebrew or pictographic representations of the writings, those they should be using. But they are using Aramaic. Please stay tuned, much more coming up because then we're going to try to understand Revelation or Autumn Feast and explain where the Autumn Feast comes from and where it lands in a specific sense and what part of the renewed covenant then you begin to understand Revelation.